Hello again, my name is Martin Heine and today I'd like to talk about the most common stereo miking mistake. I see this one quite frequently, uh, particularly in home recording situations, but also in studios and on stages. The application where I'm probably seeing this the most is piano recording, but also small ensemble stereo pickup and also drum overheads. Now I'll accept that mistake is a loaded word, as there are no rules and everyone's free to do what they like. But perhaps if you've been employing this technique after watching this video and knowing what to listen out for, you may want to make some small adjustments as well. If you're a seasoned pro, I don't wish to waste your time. So what I'm getting at here is inward angled equivalent stereophony. And if you just sighed and said, oh yes, then this video may not be for you. All right, let's start at the beginning. When we listen in stereo, we have two speakers, one left and one right. If the two speakers play back the exact same thing, then we perceive the sound as coming from the middle, the phantom center. In fact, our ears really also hear the signal as coming from the two separate speakers, but we've grown accustomed to the illusion and that would be for a different subject. Okay, so now if we want to perceive a sound as coming from more to the side of the setup, there are only two possible ways of achieving that, plus a third, which is a combination of the two. First, one speaker can play the sound louder than the other speaker. This is called level or intensity difference and shifts the sound towards the louder speaker. Second, one speaker plays the sound ever so slightly earlier than the other speaker. This is called time difference and shifts the sound towards the earlier speaker. Third option is the combination of the two. Our ears have evolved to be amazingly attuned to the finest of changes to these two parameters in order to avoid predators. This ability nowadays makes it possible to create a full, detailed and visceral stereo image between two speakers. So when we set up our stereo pickup, we have to consider which of these differences we're trying to create. For option one, level difference, one would commonly use what's called a coincident pair. This would be done with pressure gradient microphones like your pencil condensers and cardioid like these, or a multi-pattern large membrane microphone like an 87, or ribbons. In any case, it has to be a directional microphone and the classic techniques include XY, Blumline or MS. Let's look at XY here. These are cardioids, which means on axis, the microphone picks up the most. And as I move down the side, it progressively gets less until there is minimal pickup right from the back. One second. Okay, here we go. Now, if one microphone is facing this way, it will pick up a sound that's coming from over here on axis louder than the other one, which is facing sideways. And consequently, this speaker will play the source louder than the other one, creating the intensity difference. For option two, a time difference, one would set up a spaced pair of usually pressure microphones or omnis at a distance to one another. This is called AB and creates the time difference as the sound coming from over here will now arrive at this microphone earlier and consequently play back earlier from the corresponding speaker as well. So far, so good. Now for the third option, you can combine the two previous techniques by using a spaced pair of directional microphones like these. This is called equivalent stereophony. Each of the European broadcasting companies had their own little variant of this, including the Dutch NOS, which stands for Nederlandse Omroepstichting, at about 30 centimeters, the Italian RAI, Radio Televisione Italiana, which is a little narrower, the German DIN, Deutsche Industrienorm, a little narrower still, and finally the narrowest is ORTF at 17 centimeters, but that's French, so I'm not pronouncing that. Now you see, we couldn't quite agree on the spacing, but crucially, all of these techniques have the microphones facing outwards. Finally, the all too common mistake that this whole video is about is this type of a setup, but with the microphones facing inwards. The horror. I reckon this problem is so widespread because people see space pairs everywhere. Hey, it's stereo. And when they set them up themselves, they think, let's point the mics at the action. Fair enough, but keeping in mind everything that we've previously discussed, let's look at what happens now. This microphone's axis is facing over here, so it will translate things coming from there via the level difference as coming from this speaker, while the sound that's originating from over here will be at this microphone earlier, and via the time difference will also translate as coming from this speaker. So the intensity difference and the time difference are now competing with one another in painting the opposite picture, 
Naturally, this results in a blurry and confusing muddled up stereo image. When the two microphones are facing outwards, however, the two stereo phenomena complement each other. <sighs> Generally, to get a better idea of the stereo image you're creating, I recommend walking the horizon, so to speak. So on a piano, you could play from the low notes up. On a drum kit, you could go and for an ensemble, you could literally walk the front line whilst singing or making some sort of noise to help you pinpoint where you are in the stereo image. This way we can see where the edges of our stereo image are actually located between the speakers and where the image may be compressed or expanded and so forth. We can go into details endlessly, but for today, let's remember that when you set up an equivalent stereo pair, the mic should not be facing inwards. Outwards, yes, parallel can work as well. Now for the last thing, there is a variant of this problem in XY as well, when you set up the mics like this. Again, I see this all the time, and there are even digital field recorders with attached mics that are set up like this. And granted, the problem is much less severe as the time difference here is really quite small, but nonetheless, it's competing information. So if you're using two separate mics for XY, make sure to set them up like so. This also has the added advantage that the mics are not in each other's acoustical shadow as they are on those field recorders. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, if you have additional questions or your own experiences to share, please do so in the comments. Also, feel free to forward this video to your recording friends and follow me here if you wish to be notified about future episodes. Thanks very much. Goodbye.